So we'll begin with the, with the spaghetti. By the time the spaghetti cooks, I have the sauce ready. So we have a little bit of, just a little bit of oil because bacon has enough fat. So Tanya, you render that. And onion, let me just a little bit more onion. You know, bacon and pasta is as old as you get with some cheese. Yeah, and who doesn't like bacon? Exactly, and who doesn't like pasta? <laughs> <laughs> This is almost our more recent recipe in, in Rome. You spent a lot of time researching in Rome. Uh-huh. In Rome, it's ubiquitous. It's this and a matriciana e cacio e pepe. So those are the three typical Roman pasta dishes. And you can get it on you know any menu. And if they don't have it, believe me, they know how to make it because they grew up on this stuff. Uh, and carbonara actually comes from uh, the name, the myth or little story behind it is that the workers in the mines, they work the carbone, and the carbonara, their wife, would have a little bit of the coal or carbone in her hair, and it would get into <laughs> the sauce. So that's the that's, black flecks of pepper. That's being creative. Let me tell you, yeah. the flavor is good. The story is, uh, is creative. But you can see how this, uh, even because a lot of times they were out in the mines, and I guess the mines were away, and they, these, these workers were by themselves. So to pull together some onions, some bacon, and if they had to sort of finish it off with an egg at the end, I, I could see that. Sure. OK, sure. so let me put this in, the onions. But let's talk a little bit about bacon and what kind will you use. Now, this is pancetta, pancha, the belly. And bacon is the belly fat, whether you have it in a slab like this. And this one is a little slightly smoked, so you might like that, or the regular bacon sliced bacon that you buy it's perfectly fine again and then we have the italians also have the guanciale this is the guanciale which is the cheek bacon it is the cheek of the pig and they cure it with salt and it is delicious so tanya in rome where would one well, first choice would be to find yourself a little Roman grandma and have her make it for you. But if you can't do that, uh, there is this little trattoria in Rome, uh, in Trastevere, actually. But not in the main sort of area of Trastevere. you got to have to find it. It's actually on Vicolo del Mattonato. Vicolo is even smaller than Via. It's a tiny little one block okay, right. Okay, okay. Lucia. And they make an awesome uh, carbonara. So, so you would say going to Trastevere is a good bet? A good bet. Okay, so this is... Nice and crispy, mm -hmm. and the and the onions, you know, I like them just a little bit. I don't like them too um, too wilted, or so a little bit of. And again, this, the use of the pasta water, is something you know. One would say, oh, you know, what, do, what should I use? Yeah, should I use stock? Should I use that? How are we doing with that? The pasta. Oh, I've got another minute, maybe two. Yeah. Okay. So let this cook together. And, uh, and then we'll finish it, really cook it in here. Uh, so when you're cooking, the pasta water is an essential ingredient of cooking pasta. Not only cooking, but dressing pasta too. So always save a little bit of that pasta water so that at the end, if it's too dense, you can use it and so on. You think we're ready? Yeah, because Go it'll ahead. absorb the uh, water exactly, from here. Exactly, and we'll cook right there. Then the binding with the egg yolk, and a lot of you are maybe apprehensive about eggs and egg yolks these days. You know, just ensure yourself that you get it from a reputable natural farm. But if you really don't want to use the egg, you don't have to. It will bind anyway. It'll be a little less rich, but it'll bind anyway. But what I do just to make it cook a little bit, if you have those concerns, is that I temper it just a little bit like that. I take some of that pasta water. Go ahead, Tanya. Hold this for me. The pasta, the, the water, the pasta water. And just put it in here. And we'll temper, we'll temper the, the okay, a little bit at a time. So this way you don't cook because you don't want the eggs to really cook or scramble, okay? And then we'll add this to the pasta to bind the whole thing, to make almost like a custard, if you will, in the pasta. Go ahead, Tanya, yeah. That's good. The pasta looks really good al dente, you see. How do you tell when the pasta is cooked, Tanya? Um, it's uh, uh, flexible enough, but not too uh, squiggly. It but still do you has taste a, it? Oh, I taste it, and when I taste it, then I also see if the water had enough salt from the beginning, so there is something to definitely tasting your pasta before. Okay. One of my favorite things is you say al dente, but uh, Fortunato from Felidia says al muro. 
It's so, no, al paco, al paco, that's al paco. what he says. It's, he loves it so al dente that it's like just out of the box almost. Exactly. But al muro, you weren't too far, you know, no, like I know. the saying of throwing the pasta to the wall and if it sticks, it's done. That's also, there's some truth to that. And that is that the pasta has a little bit of that starch left to it and that you want that. That's why you don't want to rinse the pasta. That's why you don't want to add oil to the pasta when it when it when it cooks because you want the sauce to adhere to it. Just you do your, you do your magic there. Oh. I can't do that. Why why not? <laughs> because it ends up on the stove. Okay, so maybe just a little bit of uh, pasta water. Okay, once I begin to add uh, the the eggs and all of that, I'll shut the fire off. I'll add the scallions just now. Go ahead, toss it around all in. This is for the freshness. And I don't want them to cook, I just want it to be nice and fresh. It's just another dimension of the onion. You already have that onion. It's not that I'm going in a different direction. Okay, so yeah, why don't you shut it off? And I'm gonna throw this and you twist the pasta soon, that's it. That's it, go ahead. Okay. And even though it's not, it's not, why don't, and then you, you will add some do I have your finger in there? No, no, no. <laughs> Good. Okay, so wait, wait, wait a second. Let me just collect all of this. So you see, I want to show them, that's why. You see how the creaminess, that's just the sauce in there? You see, it, and it's not scrambled, it's just, and that is from the egg. Uh, it's nice and, and glides. Go ahead. Okay. The, the formaggio. You can put grana, parmigiano, but pecorino also is, is used in this and is used a lot in Rome. They use a lot the pecorino. They have a lot of sheep there. Some more? You like some more? Uh, I like to put it on at the end. Okay, then we'll, we'll do just that because you and I are going to eat it. So I want to please you. Cooking is all about uh, giving, pleasing people, uh, making them enjoy. So, you know, it's not uh, this is exactly the way. It's the way your guests or your family likes it. Mm-hmm. Okay, so. Ah. Smells delicious. So you put it into a needle, into a nest. You just, the condiment should be just enough to coat the pasta. Okay, I'll, I'll leave a little bit. You and I will eat out of the, out of the pot. How's that? Sure, sure. How is that? This is perfecto. You add the cheese that you want to add. Should we put a little cheese there too? Mm-mm. Okay. I mean, this is what family is all about. Eating out of the same pot. <laughs> okay. Mm. Delicioso. Ti piace? Mm -hmm. Buono. Like in Trastevere? Better. Ha <laughs> ha.